you can't ready. want something for somebody they got to want it for themselves mm, like gotcha. a lot of time I, you know i feel like i probably try to force stuff on people because i'm just so excited like mm. but you should try to you know follow what i'm doing and you know probably work out better for you mm -hmm. you know when people come to me with their problems i try to like you know do what i'm doing mm -hmm. but i guess i it probably be better if you just live your life and inspire people by them watching you no instead doubt. of preaching to them real talk man you can't make people you can't force people to do things that you think that they should be doing. It's going to come a time in everybody's life where they're going to get it together or they're going to lose it all. So only thing you can do is just keep being inspirational, keep being motivational. You don't even have to say it. Your actions can show it. You know what I mean? Shout out to Gucci Man, man. This episode is titled Pimping and Programming. I bet y'all wonder why I titled it that, though, man. Like. In my mind, I think like pimping, everybody's getting pimped. It's just who is pimping you? It could be the government. It could be a man. It could be a woman. It could be artificial intelligence. It could be you pimping yourself because you're playing yourself and programming. I look at people today like we concerned about artificial intelligence and robots and stuff when we're just robots in the flesh. You're being programmed to like what you like. You listen to the radio station. You forced to like those songs. They keep playing them on repeat so they can keep putting them in your head to say, this is good. You keep watching the same shows and you think that that's reality. You're being programmed, dog. Real talk, man. But on this episode, I got a lot to talk about, man. I seen like in the culture, everybody is discussing this ebony k williams thing man she's a lawyer from charlotte north carolina i'm located in charlotte charlotte north carolina so i gotta discuss it i gotta talk about it man and uh my perspective on would you date a bus driver and the current climate that black women and black men is in because it's different it's ever changing i gotta talk about artificial intelligence some more i done said that three times already in the podcast i'm actually kind of tired of talking about it and another thing that I'm kind of tired of talking about, but I have to discuss it, is the snitching thing, man. We have new discussions about snitching in the streets and hip-hop weekly. Now, in my era when I was active in those things, man, it seemed like snitching was rare. It was unbelievable when you heard that somebody told or somebody did this or did that but mike mcbath came on the podcast last week and he discussed where the term came from and who was the first people to do it the italians was the first people tell her it ain't <laughs> it ain't nothing new but it's not a rare thing no more it's, it's more normalized now we seeing more of it and it's it's more in the topics of discussion in our culture now and we have to Break it on down. And I got to break this one on down with Rollo because he's a brother from the South, from Atlanta. I remember he used to post those pictures on Instagram in the airplane with millions of dollars behind them. That's kind of self-snitching at the end of the day when I look back at it. And I have some more things I want to talk about. Like, I got a book I want to talk about. But I didn't load the, the imagery so y'all could hear what the book is is saying or whatever i didn't get a little snippet or whatever so we could like break down the book though but we're gonna get into the podcast man let's go let's go let's go i got a a couple of callers i want to call and have a discussion with and i hope y'all just enjoy i hope y'all learn something and y'all highly entertained let's get to it <laughs> Jackson podcast. Yep, 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 yep. Let's get it, man. So, the first topic of discussion I want to have is about Ebony K. Williams when she said that she would not date a bus driver after she had the interview with the lady. I forgot her name right now, and I can't think of it off top because I didn't know who the lady was until 
I seen Ebony K on have her on her show and discuss her. I think she's an author or something like that. And dating a bus driver is like it's it's I think that you should date who you're compatible with. You should be with who you're compatible with. But now when I think about females, they always think of financial first. I don't think that you can find love like that. Me personally, I don't think that you can find love like that. Men, when we go into a a relationship, we gotta we think that is she bad first. I don't think that you can find love like that. I think your first interest should be, am I compatible with this person? Can we agree upon certain things? Can we not argue, but look at it as a disagreement? That's just a disagreement, baby. We we can, because if you look at it as an argument, arguments end, disagreements move forward. So, <clears throat> I'm going to just play the skit. I'm going to play the skit so I can further the discussion. You date a bus driver. You. Would you date if a bus If he owns driver? the bus. If he owns no. it. If he owns the bus. See, that's, a problem. that's a problem. That's a problem. Okay. Because the standards and requisites, and I'm not talking about him laying on his sofa playing video games all day. <laughs> I'm not talking about mm-hmm. that, but the standards and the criteria that we use to measure men is off for who mm-hmm. we are as women and who they are in this society. I would date a bus driver mm-hmm. if he was, if he loved driving the bus, if he was a man of mm-hmm. integrity, if he was good to his mama, if he treated me well, I would date a bus driver. But we think that it's another human being's responsibility to give us what we need instead of us building together. I can build with a bus driver. Mm. I'd have my little stash over on the side in my prenup, but I could build with a bus driver. She said something that was key to me. We look at it as if it's our partner's responsibility. I previously spoke on this podcast about like, uh, Happiness is a choice. Some males think that it's our responsibility to make our woman happy. That's not true to me. That's not true. And those ladies that was communicating right there, they're in an age difference. Ebony K is like 40. That other lady is like in her mid to late 50s. So we living in times where time is moving extremely fast. Things are going by fast and uh, perspectives and, and, and the way people view relationships is changing quick. It's changing real quick. Like it wasn't normal for homosexuals to be out in that woman's era. It wasn't normal for people to be transsexuals in the military, transsexuals, period. It's just we living in times where the world is out of control. and. The male relationship is out of control. Now, there's statistics out there like Ebony K. Williams is a, a financially stable woman. She's doing well with herself. But um, when I think about finances and I think about relationships, I don't think that that's the totality of the relationship. But I think men, black men, need to step up. Women don't like stack being stagnant. They want you to continue to elevate. Men get comfortable to the point to where I'm doing this. I got this job. I'm comfortable. This is where I'm at. So now we got more women buying homes. Men is renting and comfortable living in an apartment or renting a house. Are they waiting until they have a child or be with a woman to buy a house? More women is owning homes than men. Statistically, I ain't pulling the statistics up right now because I'm just conversing with y'all, but I read it and I suggest y'all to do it also. More women, black women, this is what I'm speaking about, all culture, black people. More black people are, uh, more black women, not black people, black women are making six figures, 100,000 or more than men. So it's it's turning into like a, a, a power struggle 
because women are vanity driven they like material things and they like uh growth and they don't like being stagnant i, I gotta make a phone call right quick because i gotta get a woman's perspective i'm gonna call my beautiful wife see what she think about this Baby. Hello. Yes. I just wanted to call you while I was recording the podcast just to get your perspective about something. Okay. Now, now I'm talking about Ebony K. Williams and uh, the lady asked her, would she date a bus driver, right? Mm -hmm. So for what, what is your perspective when you first heard that statement when she said no? What did you think? I just want to know your thoughts. You can make it be short or whatever you want to be, baby. Well, I mean, in my opinion, if that's what she desires, that's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, um, people have different expectations. And so if that's what she wants out of life, then I don't see anything wrong with that. However, personally for me, I mean, I wouldn't say that because it's not about somebody's occupation. It's more about their character. Okay. That's what I look for. I like that. Because finances, you know, will come. Mm -hmm. If the person is motivated, if they're, you know, willing to go out and do what needs to be done, that would come. Yeah. But just judging a person by, you know, their current occupation, uh, I, I wouldn't do that. Okay. I like but like I said, you know, everybody is different. So, you know, yeah. people, people are different. So if yeah. that's how she feels. Then that's okay. And and also because guess what? She the, lives her life for her, right? Yeah, that's true. And everybody lives their lives for themselves. So why are we judging her? We shouldn't be judging her. You're right in that aspect. And what what tripped me out about that is that people will judge her, like you said, because she looked at finances first. But do you think mm -hmm. women don't like being stagnant? Like stagnicity like even though you could you might date a man and it not be for his finances but tell me about being stagnant for five to ten years a man not elevating or even attempting to elevate is that a problem for me but you know i can only speak for me i can't speak for somebody else okay, okay. right because i mean we need to grow and we need to develop mm -hmm. if you're not you know developing you're not learning then what are you doing okay Okay, you're just like cruising that. through life. I like that. I like that. Because he could be the bus but, driver, but he can't be the bus driver okay. 10 years from now, though. No. You know what? Let me say this. Okay. So I guess if, if, if this individual was, you know, uh, really interested in that for the rest of their life, and that's what they want to do, that made them happy, they can do that, but they also can do something else. Okay. How about that? Okay. Okay. That's that, I because like that. We don't know how much this bus driver is making. We don't know this person could be a billionaire. We don't know that. Mm -hmm. They could own something so, else outside of being a bus driver. Right. So you're judging a book even before you open the pages. That's true. Hey, I appreciate you, baby. I ain't going to take up too much of your time. I just wanted to get a woman's perspective on this conversation. I'm about to play her closing statement, her response to people being in a frenzy about her saying she wouldn't date a bus driver. because. Even though she wouldn't date a bus driver, women, I think that women need to take into perspective if they're millionaire women, would a million dollar mm -hmm. man be interested in you? Ooh. But <laughs> I ain't going to take up too much of your time. I love you, baby. I mean, yeah, that's fine. But like I said, you know, everybody has um, different expectations for people, that's right? True. That's true. And so you got to let people be who they are. And we need to stop judging people. Just let people live. Okay. That's right. And, and you know, focus on yourself, basically. Focus How on yourself. How is that affecting you? It's not. It's not. It's not. People just want to yeah. use what she said, her perspective, as content so they can get some views and likes on social media, basically. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> enjoy enjoy your night, baby. I'm, I'm, I'm about to finish up the show. I love you. I love you, too. Bye. Bye-bye.
had to give the wifey some clap. She gave a dope perspective. I appreciate that because I I was basically saying what she came into agreement with before I even called her. It ain't a problem being a bus driver, man. Nobody's occupation is bad, man. It's just about are you willing to continue to elevate? Do you want more out of life? Just because you find naturally stable don't mean that this person ain't a quality individual. And also, how you know that somebody that's of your financial standards even is interested in you? You could be a millionaire, but a million dollar man might look at you like you're a fool. But let me let me get her, let her get her talk off and, and let her respond. She went on a breakfast club and she responds to all the frenzy of people talking about would you date a bus driver, Shouty? It is nothing wrong with driving a bus if that is your maximum skill set. I simply want to call Black America up to the excellence that I know we can occupy. I've seen it before. Entrepreneurship is the key to me. That's not just me talking. That's Earl Graves Sr., the, 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 the founder and visionary of Black Enterprise. I'm talking about Black Enterprise, Black ownership, and Black liberation. And it is important to me. A, it's, it's in my DNA. It's my personal legacy. Because my mama told me, y'all, nobody will pay you what you will pay you. Mm. And this is not about shaming bus drivers, but I want to be clear. If you are driving a bus today and that is the maximum of your skill set, I love and appreciate it for you. I have to because it's an honest day's living. But I want to tell you the truth. And this is not about hurting feelings or, or talking down or being an elitist. I need you to know that in 10 years, you may or may not have a job because... AI, AI. AI. Yeah. artificial yeah. intelligence. See, this is the part nobody is, wants to talk about. The lawyers might not have a job in ten years. They might not, <laughs> and that's why. So I'm glad you, yeah. you're going there, Charlemagne, mm -hmm. because this is the part of the conversation that people really are, are feeling triggered by. We all have to reassess constantly. The Fred Jackson podcast. <laughs> That's going to switch me into the AI conversation, and I didn't mean for it to do it like that. I didn't, I didn't mean for that. But that's going to make me get into the artificial intelligence conversation because people promoting fear with it. And it's moving faster than the tech individuals expected. But she said something that caught my attention. I ain't saying I agree or disagree with her response, but we got to continue to learn. We got to continue to move forward because people are promoting fear with artificial intelligence, but how are we going to use it to get ahead? The tech is here. We got to be able to use it to our advantage instead of being fearful of it and fall behind. We got to be able to do multiple things. I understand why she says she wouldn't date the bus driver. And I don't. But she didn't clarify what I didn't understand. So to me, all human beings at this time, I remember like 20 years ago, you could work one job and retire and be straight and die. and Be happy. Live in your house and die. Those days are done for. You can't work one job. You can't own one business. You can't create one thing. If you don't got multiple streams of income, and biblically it says you should have multiple streams of income, you bullshit. It's hard for us to get up out of that because we've seen our parents and our grandparents work one job for years and they survived off of that. But those days are over, dog. Your job could shut down today. And you won't know what to do tomorrow. That next job you could do could shut down today. And you won't know what to do tomorrow. YouTube could close this platform. It could fall off like how MySpace and other platforms have done. And you won't know what to do tomorrow if you don't continue to learn and continue to move forward. So I'm going to get into the AI conversation. But first, I'm going to call up. I'm going to call up an individual. Because we're supposed to be doing a show tomorrow, man. And I love this person a lot, man. They was on the album. And they show love, man. I'm going to call him while you're in the streets. See what type of time he on.
I know you're in the street. Hello. I know you're in the street, bitch. I just wanted a, a second of your. I just wanted a second of your time. See if we doing the pod tomorrow, cuz. Oh yes, oh you already know we on. Okay, where you at? You in the carnival or something? I see you enjoying yourself. Yeah, man, we was at the spot at the little Plaza Mariachi, man, in uh, Nashville. You know what's happening, man. Okay, okay, okay. I just want to touch bases with food. you. International Food uh, uh, Day. What? My daughter had a recital today, so, you know, I took mm-hmm. off and kicked it with the family, man. Mm-hmm. Had a good time. That's what's up, cuz. What y'all, what y'all eat on, fam? If I can be known. Oh, uh, what we have? Wifey had the, uh, what was them called? The burrito tacos? Oh, some the burrito. Tacos. I know what she's talking about. The ones you dip them in the French onion dip and all of that. I don't know what she had. I, I had me some uh some, um strikeout wings. Hot, hot. Uh, yeah, I had them lemon, them them, them uh hot lemon peppers. Okay, hot boy. Okay, okay. Yes, uh, okay. I ain't well, never had them. There. They had they was highly uh recommended, so we had to hit them up. Okay, well enjoy yourself, cause I just want to make sure and let the people know that we doing the pod tomorrow. Y- y'all see me and Jack Boy on the show, man. Enjoy your night, Cuckoo. <laughs> For sure, cuz. And yes, sir, it's popping them all. Make sure y'all tune in, man. You feel me? Let's get it, fam. All right, cuz. All right. It's Fallon Jackson Podcast. Let me get into the AI conversation and make sure that y'all subscribe to the channel. If you're listening to the audio version, man, on Apple Podcasts, because we do bigger numbers on Apple Podcasts and Spotify than we do on YouTube. But if y'all listening to the audio version, come on over to the YouTube and check out the visuals. But make sure that you subscribe so you can get me and Jack episode that we are in tomorrow, man. And also, I want to mention that, man, my boy, Troy, man, I'm I'm ready. I'm ready to get back on the pod together. I know you're getting your mic and everything going. Let's make it happen, fam. Let's make a show happen where we have the two brothers going to work it out. For real. Real talk. But I'm going to get into this AI discussion, and I'm going to start it off with some hip-hop. I went into relationships and all of that at the beginning of the podcast, but I'm going to start it off with some hip-hop. Real talk. In the meantime, you know, I got to share something I've been working on because I always wanted to do this, and I never got a chance to. I always wanted to work with Big, and I never got a chance to until today. It came out right. Play. Three. Now I'm playing when I keep the trick up my sleeve. Throwing my stick and fuck your gun and get your big speed. Gotta have my car. She won't be my man's queen. The cup of cheese. It ain't on me. It's in me. Keep all my gold so broad when I'm grinning. Put some cabbage on my chain. I'm not my chimney. Got the drop and drop it fast. I put on in the tree. My man don't give a gift, she said it's not giving. If you wanna smoke, I gotta keep a hot chimney. Two hot pot smoke, young dog pot mixing. A lot of ants. Oh shit, that boy wild. I enjoyed that record though, but as long as it's fire, is it is it cool? Will we accept it? As long as it's fire. I don't think that that's a good thing, but at the beginning of the pod, I was saying that we need to embrace it if we want to get ahead because it's here and it's not going nowhere. So I understand what Timberland doing. He like, man, it's not going nowhere. Let me go ahead and and get on it and get to it and get straight to business and, and use it to my advantage. I don't like the fact that most of the artists that they're using are dead people. They got Michael Jackson, artificial intelligence on C murder song, F the mother N words, niggas, F the mother niggas. I don't like that. I don't like that they're using Tupac uh, vocals. They're using the tone of their voice and putting it with other people's rhymes. It's crazy what can be done with artificial intelligence, but it's her. So what should we do? Now, something is going on in Hollywood that caught my attention. And I'm all for paying the creators. That's what I'm about, paying the creators. 
musically, books. I had a, a conversation with my partner, man. I ain't going to mention his name. He may know that I'm talking about him in this segment, but I love him to death. I was saying that I, I pay for books. I'm never going to just listen to an uh, audio book for free because it's on YouTube. I'm never going to uh, accept anything for free. before you get, Even if you gave it to me, I'd give you $2, $3 for it. Because at the end of the day, I got to pay the creators. I can watch the fight for free. I just lost $100 on the tank fight trying to buy it from this app. I need to highlight this app because they got me for $100. And, uh, I'm all about paying the creators, but they robbed me. They wouldn't even let me click the link. Dazen, I think it's D-A-Z-N. They uh, wouldn't let me click the link to watch the fight for free. I mean, watch the fight that I paid for. And I'm all about paying the creators, but I got robbed. You know what I mean? For $100. So when I say pay the creators, I don't mean pay Apple Music to listen to the, the stream the music. I mean buy the album. You might got Spotify and you paying $10 for Spotify, Apple Music. But you didn't buy my album. I want you to pay for the album. $10 from iTunes. If you got Apple Music, go to iTunes and pay $10 and download the album. Pay for it. You ain't paying me by listening to it. You're giving me 70% of a penny per stream. You ain't paying for that. You paying Apple. When you uh watch somebody's film, a documentary on Netflix, you are not paying for the film. You're paying for Netflix so you can watch it. People get it twisted and think that they are supporting or helping the individual by just viewing it. Nah, you helping out that platform that's allowing me to put my content on there. You're not helping me. When you when you uh, got Audible on your phone, if you a book reader or whatever, you have to pay for everything. Unless you get that free, uh, that monthly subscription that you're paying fifteen dollars a month for, then you get the book. You know what I mean? Like, you got to pay for people's stuff, man. Why? Why do you even want everybody's stuff for free? To be honest with you, let me let me play the vibes for a minute so I can help my hit my wine. Like I'm saying, like. <clears throat> Things are moving faster than we think they are. People are going to be losing jobs here soon, man. Real soon. It's going to be sad. It's expected in the next three years that 300 million people, jobs will be replaced by artificial intelligence. So in Hollywood right now, the writers are going on a strike. Overnight, more than 11,000 film and TV writers went on strike after the Writers Guild of America and a group representing TV networks and studios failed to agree on a contract. The first to feel the effects of the strike, late night comedy shows like Jimmy Kimmel Live. They cannot produce new episodes without writers. It may be a long time before viewers really feel the impact of of a strike because all the major players have such vast libraries of shows. The two sides are at odds over writers' pay for shows on streaming services, among other things. The writers say streaming's lack of a regular seasonal calendar has hurt their pay. Network series typically were 22 episodes or even more. Streaming series are 10, 8, sometimes even 6 or even 4 episodes. The last writer strike back in 2007 lasted 100 days, costing California's economy an estimated $2 billion. Experts say that strike boosted reality television, giving a rise to unscripted shows like Big Brother and The Apprentice. Maria, you're fired. But the impact of this new strike will go far beyond Hollywood and New York. Take Georgia, for instance, where movie and TV productions pumped more than $4 billion into the local economy last year. Georgia is a leader in the, in the world. We're a top three, typically, production uh, city. Uh, we're going to feel it more than most other markets and feel it you know, just as much as, as New York or L.A. would. The group representing TV networks and studios says it's committed to reaching a fair agreement. Watch breaking news on YouTube. Subscribe to ABC7 Chicago Eyewitness News. I feel like they went on strike, but I feel like the strike is going to backfire. I feel like they ain't going to be needed no more. 
they're going to figure out a way that they can use artificial intelligence to create these shows and we're going to be fine with it. They're going to figure out a way where artificial intelligence can um, I, that's one of my guests that I'm about to have on the show in a minute what I'm looking at. They're going to figure out a way to have artificial intelligence create music and we're going to be fine with it. They're going to figure out a way artificial intelligence can take your job and we're going to be fine with it. The human is not going to be needed no more. And it's a sad time, though. But, man, like Ebony K was saying, you got to continue to learn and got to continue to be of value because you can be replaced, man. You can be replaced. I got some more topics. Yeah, if y'all know me personally, I'm a I work in real estate. I work in graphic design. I also work in logistics, warehousing and all of that type of stuff. And I'm going to get off the artificial intelligence, but I'm going to give y'all a laugh with this. If this ain't funny to you, I don't know <laughs> who you are. But they're trying to replace warehouse workers with robots at this moment at Amazon, at Cisco Foods, U.S. Foods, at uh, multiple warehouses. But. Are the robots capable of doing what the human is capable of doing? Real spill. reason i play that is because people are promoting fear that they're going to lose their job or whatever though don't be scared man they ain't got the kings worked out yet you may lose your job in the future but continue to elevate your mind elevate yourself and make sure that you create opportunities for yourself man i'm about to call my guy though man trap baby meach What's good? Hello? What's good? Am I speaking to Trap? Yeah, him. What's going on, Trap Baby, man? I just wanted to have a discussion with you on the podcast, man, and call you and promote your show. I enjoy your show and, and just have a discussion with my guy, man. What's going on with you tonight, fam? You doing well? Man, I'm doing great, man. I appreciate the call. Um, man, uh, I'm doing well on the show. Uh, this last week, I actually missed the show because I was trying to get some more people interested in the movement right now i'm just trying to spread positivity later on in the show there will be more activities and there will be more things to interact with mm -hmm. but uh i'm i'm asking for you know as much help as i can get man and, and really starting out you really helped me a long way i really i really do appreciate that man for yes, real. i got your back man and anything that i can assist you in i got your back man and i'm telling everybody that's watching my show man to Go to Trap Baby's View and check them out, man. That last episode that you did where you was talking about health and consuming foods and stuff, you know, I'm a vegan, so I was highly interested in that, fam. Yeah, and I would like to have I would like to have people who actually practice things like that come on the show and talk about it, man. Because really, like, if we can get a, a unified understanding of what it is we really need to do mm -hmm. as a human being, not as a race or as a bank account or as anything other than as a human being, where we yeah. can actually, like, I'm right now, I ain't gonna lie to y'all, I'm munching down on some McDonald's, bro, but I know, you know what I mean, yeah. eventually it's gonna catch up to me. Yeah. It, it runs in my family, health defects and stuff like that. So, you know, I just, I hope one day that we can all come together, unify, and, and stop things like, well, this hunger that we got in the world, and homelessness, and, and, yeah. and pain that mothers go through from black brothers killing each other and stuff like that, yeah. man. Because it's, it's actually, to me, 
I'm glad you talked about that too, because it's actually unnecessary when we got people out here that's worth a billion dollars and you know what I mean? The information yeah. is free. To give the information is free and to be able to eat fruits and vegetables and stuff, it shouldn't even cost money because that's what God gave to the earth for free. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, yeah. So when when well, it, I mean come my fault coming okay. up really Go ahead, my bad. Nah, it's my fault, fam. We can't see each other. We just on a phone call. So finish what you was about right. to say, fam. Coming up. You said coming up. Right. Coming up, like, my mama always told me, eat your vegetables. Your mother always tells you, eat your vegetables. Yeah. But you never really pay much attention to why she's telling you eat your vegetables. Mm. Like, you got to think about it. Coming up in a black home, we most likely was getting the vegetables that we really could get. You know what I mean? And the fruits that we really had availability to yeah come to tell the truth those fruits weren't what we really needed because they were being genetically modified now we see things like more babies being born without wisdom teeth and things like that like it, it, the evolution is happening right in front of our eyes and if you look at evolution in a certain way like if you go through science it's hand in hand with revelation man you know it's the more we keep uh uh objectifying women and changing the way that you look at a woman and, and change the way that you look at a man. And the more we travel down that path, we, you know, it, it's just a repeat of what we saw in the Bible. It's yeah. just the same thing we've seen in the Quran. Yeah. It, it's all, you know, what you've been it, reading it's right there in our heart. I don't mean to cut well, you, I, I don't mean to cut you off trap, baby. What you've been reading. I love, I love my niggas. They read now what you've been reading, fam. Man. Uh, I really don't, I don't get much into two, different like too many different things but I, I dabble in I read the Quran from here and there mm -hmm. and I definitely read the Bible yeah. but my main thing is man I, I'm big on documentaries man I'd rather listen to a, a a documentary while I do something like if I'm cooking mm -hmm. or if I'm if I'm editing something or if I'm trying to figure out how I make my t-shirts or from some place I'm most likely listening to a documentary or something that's going to benefit me later on down the road I'm actually right now in the process of trying to get my GED and my LLC. So that's what's like, up, it's just, you know, it's, it's all like a, a, a stack of things and right now. I know reading is fundamental, but listening is too. It, 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 it all comes together. And it, it all comes. Some together. people uh, learn differently. Some people learn from smelling, hearing, seeing, touching some people. Exactly. Yeah. So it ain't, it ain't, I, I'm not one of those person, those type of people to judge a person by not reading because most of the time I listen to audio books when I listen to books or whatever though, but I could tell that you are a young man though. Right. Right. This is what, this is my, this is my way of thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Any way you can obtain knowledge, do so. Yeah. I, I'll tell my, I just talked to my little cousin not too long ago about it. I'm like, Man, he's, talk, he's telling me, like, I'm like, man, what are you going up to school for if you feel like you're not learning everything? You're not learning anything. Mm -hmm. Like, man, they're not teaching me anything. They're saying this, they're saying that. Well, if you think about it, bro, you're going up here with all these different resources and you're not teaching yourself anything. You want to learn something, yeah. but instead of thinking of it like, well, it's a system, it has to be used some way, mm -hmm. you're thinking of it like the system is using you. Mm-hmm. And you gotta you gotta change it. You, your mindset is to be oppressed. Yeah. Your mindset is to think like, all right, I just don't want to be oppressed. Did we inherit that though, Trap? Right. And it's it's easy to fall in that mind state when we have social media posts, things like everyone's on Facebook relating to the same thing, so we all feel like it's still going on. But yeah. it's a it's a it's a rarity when you see these things. And then when you do see them, they're blown up on social media because everyone pulls their phone out mm -hmm. and records it and posts it. Yeah. So we're all we're all taking a part in it, but nobody really wants to stop it. Like take the time to think, like, bro, look, you really being an asshole for being racist, or you really being an asshole for being prejudiced. Yeah. Just you know, man, relax, man, calm down. I understand you might not like me, bro, but you don't have to be. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to aggravate me about it. You don't have to. You know threaten me about it yeah that's not something that you should be putting on social media that's mm -hmm. something that you should address in person with your feelings and your emotions yeah 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 sometimes you don't need to respond on social most of the time people don't need to respond on social media they need to just contact the person and communicate with them in real life for real man how do really? you know, how do you know uh trap man i'll be 24 the 19th of this month 
let me let me ask you a question. I'm 43. I'm old. I'm a. I ain't old. I don't feel old. I feel young. But at the end of the day, <laughs> how do uh, how do you feel about school and education? Because you said something that caught my attention though. When you was telling your partner you need to be self-taught, because I didn't learn being self-taught or even trying to teach myself till I was thirty or thirty-five. You're twenty-four, talking about that already. Well, I mean, as a kid, I was interested in school. I just wasn't interested in the way they were teaching me. That's all it was. Like, yeah, I would look in textbooks and see cool things, but it was never like the words would all jumble up, and no one would ever explain why they got that way. And, you know, later on down the road, you can name it as dyslexia or or, um, uh, ADHD or or whatever. But what about the lack of attention that the teacher is giving the students? Or what about the lack of information that we're actually having at the school for these resources we don't have? Or what about the fact that we're in we're in uh, urban areas? So they're only giving us so much education. Yeah. Like it's just you know it's everyone's ball game or how they're making money and the youth has to the youth is expendable for some reason yeah. but the youth has to know right now man is not the time to embrace shoot 'em up music right now is the time to embrace how to become independent self sufficient yeah intelligent yeah very wise in order to break this chain. We we looking around, we're seeing each other live on top of each other. Mm-hmm. Your mother is losing water every other month because she can't work a job because she can't find a babysitter because there's not an uncle or a father or a brother. There's not a, you know what I mean? There's not a grandparent. Or, yeah. There's always something missing, but we're, we're never unified enough to stop it. And, and I, I, I got something else to ask you because you spoke about all of those things but you didn't say nothing about artificial intelligence. How you feel about artificial <laughs> intelligence coming into play right now? And we dealing with, we can't even unify right now as people. And, and here soon, we're going to be losing jobs, even more jobs. We're going to be losing opportunities. People might make 100000 today at a, a good job and might not make nothing tomorrow because of artificial intelligence. It's just more struggle. How important is it for us to, to unify right now? Well, you got to think about it. First and foremost, of course, anybody that's creating or inventing some inventors are made to make life easier for the human being. Of course, AI is made to take people's jobs. Mm -hmm. But if the working man is doing something that an AI can step in and take over, don't you think it's time for you to level up? to where you're the one operating on the AI or you're the one making the AI or you're the one funding the let company. Me, let me Don't, give you some claps you know, right quick, fam. I got to give some claps. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going, fam. I apologize. Like, it's it's time to, you know, once we evolve in a mindset, in a, in a state of living, then these problems will become obsolete. We will become the, the reason that they're being solved. You got to look at it. 400 years of free labor built this country. Mm. Free labor. Talk about it. 400 years of free labor built this country. You got to think about it. Whose backs was it built on? Goodness gracious. Whose backs was it built on? Now you got me wanting to talk about reparations. (laughs) I don't even want to talk about it, but at the end of the day, Reparations. It's, it's, it's well needed. It is 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 it deserved? What would we do with it though? It's what, well needed, but right now it's not deserved. Well, like, do you think we'll do the right things with it if we obtain it? I don't I don't feel like reparations should go in directly into our hands. Not cat in the form of cash. No, not in the form of cash. I feel like it should be reparations as in a form of land, a safer way of a safer way of living, mm. you know, a safer way of eating. Maybe, maybe go pick one of these farms, these family farms, and build them, build them to a better establishment. Mm. Or you know, I mean, you know, like give us cows or give us cattle, give us land, give us something that's resourceful of our own. Yeah, because we put four hundred years into this, and it's in our blood, it's in our DNA. We have all these other things from the 70s and the 80s and and so other all this stuff. You got to think when Jim Crow hit, Jim Crow was like the second wave of slavery. 
then after that, it was another wave and another. We're still, and we're it's, still, it's still battling it. going on today. It's just in yeah, a we're different still form. battling. It. Yeah, it's just in a different exactly. form. Yeah, it's in social media form, an app form now. Ooh. It's in working. Okay. It's in, it's in like come on, man. It's in all the. It's in prisons. It's in everything that we like school systems. Everything is set up in a systematical form in order for these social these. Think about social is everything. Mm -hmm. Networking is everything. Yeah. Social security card is your bank account. You're born a number that's getting sold across escrow accounts. And I mean, I, I, it's a lot to say, but someone needs to educate everyone else. And I'm not trying to be the Messiah or a martyr, but I'm at least trying to let people know. Yeah, it's people in the it's people right next to you in the hood that has a detrimental piece of information that you need talk to them try to figure out what it is that y'all can do to come together and make a master plan to feed your family i'm not talking about drugs or yeah selling guns or any i'm talking about it's just going learning. to put some money to, yeah like put some money together and get a building in order to produce plants and and things like that or, or produce yeah. like fresh produce you know what i mean like put something together and, and building a community I, instead of tearing it down i see the young boys now and it's, it's i had some guys on my podcast recently that's in the box truck business i don't know if you've seen the oh, episode yeah. trap but uh, I, I, i'm pretty sure i've seen something like that i, I watch it here and there i just miss so much because i'm i'm so busy man. yeah i apologize that's on me nah, no 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 you cool i <laughs> see these guys that's doing uh box truck businesses and stuff man and I know some young boys that's playing with enough to buy a box truck right now in their pocket. Uh, some young niggas walking around the K right now got enough to buy a box truck in their pocket right now. And if they yep, only I know that, a few myself. They could make $1,200 just driving to Nashville with some bleach in the truck. $1,500 to drive to Asheville. Go up to Kentucky to Lexington and make $2,000 just driving, man. It's... And we'll rather ride around the hood and smoke and talk crazy to each other when at the end of the day, it's boys, it's, it's young boys making a killing out here and they coming together and they they grouping up and, and they doing their thing, man. And Trap, I just want to, only reason I wanted to call you tonight is because I like what you're doing. I like the message that you're sending out and I want to highlight you and let you know that anything that you need me for, I'm, I'm here to to assist you and con contribute to, to your well-being, fam. I appreciate you, fam. Man, I appreciate it, man. I, I appreciate all your viewers that tap in on my show, man. I appreciate everyone's ear that I could, you know what I'm saying? I caught, man. Hey, that's what's up, man. When I when I get off the podcast, I'm gonna hit you back, man. And I just I'm thankful for you, fam. Have a good night, my brother. All right, you too. Man. Let's get it. <laughs> Got to give that young brother some hand claps. Trap Baby Meach, man. Trap Baby's View. That's the name of his show. It's Fi. That's all I can say. His show is Fi. He be, he's 24. Y'all heard how old he said he was, man. He's 24 years old. He's on there talking about veganism, health. Uh, he has dope hip-hop artists on there from Knoxville, Tennessee. That's fire. I, I rock with them boys something tough, man. And uh, I rock with his brother, too, Barriato. He was on the podcast, him, Hood Baby Key. The, the young guys from uh, Knoxville. I ain't going to say, I'm not going to limit them to a location. But those are, the youth, to me, in comparison to when I was young, they elevating faster. They learn it faster. You see how fast his mind was working to be a 24-year-old? He know about stuff that i didn't have a clue about till i was 30 35 years old but with that being said man i'm gonna continue on with the show man but that conversation was dope man and i'm gonna hit it with my song of the week man and y'all know last week i did a podcast called identifying your demons now i want to know if y'all can identify a hit record to me People might not be a fan of this, but I like the Scarlip uh, record. This is New York. She is aggressive and hard on the record. 
I was wondering, I'm located in Charlotte. I said that with the Ebony K. Williams discussion because she's from Charlotte. And uh, identifying a hit. I was wondering where the baby has been at for a while because it seemed as if he's been suppressed by the algorithm. It seems as if he's been uh, blackballed or whatever. It seemed like he's he spoke about the LGBTQ community with Rolling Loud, and it seemed like he's nowhere to be found. He went from millions of views and millions of streams and platinum records to nowhere. But now, to me, he got a hit record out, and it's coming out, the visual and everything soon. He's finna drop on the 28th, but I want to let y'all hear it the first time live on stage and Rolling Loud. Shit. Y'all want to hear some new shit from Baby Make Some Motherfucking Noise? <laughs> Ladies, come on. Trap, you ready with the pyro? Let go. Oh, no shit, no shit, hands up, hands up, yeah. hands up, yeah. one, two, one, two, three, let's go. I don't know how to dance but cause ain't Make the ghetto bitches put their hands on their knees Make the ghetto bitches put their hands on their knees Make the ghetto bitches put their hands on their knees I don't know how to dance but cause ain't Make the ghetto bitches put their hands on their knees Make the ghetto bitches put their hands on their knees Make the ghetto bitches put their hands on their knees Yeah, sir, bitty bitty what? Bitty B. Yeah, Bitty B. Rolling loud, I need you to lose your mind with this shit. Let's go. Do this shit. I don't know how to dance, but you lean. And make the ghetto bitch put their hands Play on their knees. knees. Make the ghetto bitch put their hands on, on their knees. knees. Make the ghetto bitch put their hands shit, on their knees. Right, I had my mic turned down, my fault. Some people may think that's a trash record, but. I think that's a hit. I think that's going to take over the summer. I think that's going to be the hit of the summer, along with the Scarlet Girl, This Is New York. Y'all don't have to agree with me, but in the future, you'll see. Come August, y'all be like, damn, Trev, you was right. So I'm going to end the podcast off with a discussion I'm tired of having. I'm tired of talking about snitching. I'm going to read a couple of things. I'm going to uh, talk about a couple of things, but nowadays it's people admitting to what they did. Black and white, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm reading your lawyer pleading on your behalf trying to get this record sealed because of this information that you gave. It's, you saying that you never said that you didn't do it, but you had me believing for five years that you kept it solid, dog. And in and, and the paperwork, it say that in two months, y'all y'all got locked up in April. In June, June 6th, you gave a profit. And you gave up information. You gave them folk the code to your phone and let them review it in your presence. That's what the paperwork say. Mm. I, 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 I ain't opposed to that shit. Blown him. The, the, the documents that you see, you're seeing from a prosecution misconduct. But hearing. Okay. But so if you saying that you gave them just the phone information because you knew nothing was in the phone, what about this shit on page 12? Line 12 and 13, where it say he is cooperating against heroin, methamphetamine, he knows about shootings, and the marijuana, where it say he is cooperating against heroin. Let's go to the... I, I, I'm, not, I'm not opposition to that. I, he, listen, when, they, when you go in there, they ask you other questions. I, I, I'm not going to lie. I presented myself in the court as an opposition. Uh, you know the code, though. I, this, that's what I'm saying. You know the code. You ain't supposed to have no meeting with them folks in the first place. I mean, uh, I was presented a, a, a situation that that other. I just you just gonna, I just only reason why you know about this is because of the prosecution misconduct here. All these rap niggas paid that money to get out of there. But I, we ain't these rap niggas though. That what I, that what. Listen, 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 please, uh, please consider this. I, only, I got caught with this shit on the plane, shake. What the fuck you thought I was gonna do? Take your lick. Like I, shit, I, it's I, just I, a week. I, I, well, okay, okay. Look, listen. Look, I, remember when I, before you got locked up, I used to always tell you, "Hey, I, don't do this. Hey, I, don't do that. Hey, I." I agree with you. Say. Okay, I, Jackson podcast. I had a partner say something that really caught my attention. Uh, cause I posted that in the Trevor Jackson podcast group, and uh, I'm gonna read his comment because he's a very intelligent person when it comes to paperwork snitching and all of that because one of my homeboys told on him in uh in my past life in like 2010 2011 
one of my homeboys told on another one of my homeboys. So he had a statement. He said, man, I need to see the paperwork because most MFers don't know how to interpret that shit anyway. MFers go off what the next man said without digging deeper. Okay. Okay, let me read some more of the comments. All the comments. I need to see all of them. Yeah. Then he said, I listened to it. His tone is definitely off, but that could be because he met with those folks and got caught up lying to his guys about that. You can go in there and tell on yourself, and it'll help you sometimes. I need to see what was said in the interviews. I had 29 co-defendants. I know all about paperwork. I know he know about paperwork, though, but Rollo, uh, what Rollo was saying, it seemed as if he was guilty. He, he was apologizing, basically. So he was fearful of the things that he had previously said. You can't take back snitching once you snitched. The only reason I'm 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 gonna get off of this. I I had some things I wanted to say. I wanted to uh, pull up some responses, but I'm gonna get off of this right quick because the only thing, the only reason I talk about snitching, I'm gonna break it down. I talk about snitching. I talked about Troy Alf. I had Troy Alf is about to go to jail still after he told. He told on somebody, and he's still going to jail, dog. I pulled up the T.I. and Bootsy thing. T.I. snitched. And Bootsy still accepted him because he helped him. The only reason I'm talking about this snitching stuff on a consistent basis is because don't involve yourself in these criminal activities. It may seem as if your brother is shining at the moment and it's taking you longer to get there. But eventually, if you keep doing right, you will get there and you will surpass the guy who is doing the criminal activities. It's like you don't want to involve yourself in that, man. You would rather struggle. I would rather struggle. At the age I'm at now, I would rather struggle than continuously do the dumb shit. Niggas out here knowing they ain't built like that. But they still doing what they... No, they can't handle. You get jammed up, dog, and they, they come at you and they say you got 5,000 months in jail. They're going to give you a cigarette and a 10-piece chicken wing and you're going to tell the whole story. You know you ain't built like that, man. That's all I got to say, man. I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Make sure y'all check out the episode with me and Jack Boy tomorrow. Peace, love, plenty of abundance. Make sure you go get you some money, and I'm out. Chip! The Trevor Jackson Podcast.